All right, so a couple of videos ago, I showed you how you can download Seamless LiDAR from the USGS using PDAL. I want to show you in this one how you can create a true color LiDAR or add true color to the LiDAR points also using PDAL, all in the same operation. And this is kind of a template for how you can even stack other PDAL operations onto the same workflow so that you never have to download raw data, but you can get all the products you want. It's pretty slick. So let's go ahead and I just have an area pulled up here that has LiDAR data. I'm gonna uncheck this now because I know that there's LiDAR data. And I'm just gonna zoom into an area of interest to, to get a download. So let's go over here um, and let's use control click to draw an area of interest. We'll just draw it for that area here. And now we want um, derived products from entwined LiDAR. So we're gonna click LiDAR processing here. And this is what we want. Um, we're just going to do it like this. We're gonna leave everything default and I'm gonna walk through how to alter the PDAL pipeline that comes out of this so we can make this true color. So I'm gonna click save PDAL pipeline and I'm gonna save this to my temp file folder and we'll just name it process and I'll click save. Okay, so now we have that JSON file saved. Let's pull up the files here. I'm gonna right click on process and I'm gonna open it with Visual Studio Code. And here we go, let me see if I can zoom in on that for you a little bit. Okay, there we go. So let's go ahead and start editing this. Now, a PDAL pipeline is, um, is just a list of commands that we will use um, to process LiDAR or process the point cloud. And so you can see that it's structured this top of a pipeline with curly braces. So let's come down here and let's just make this a little easier to read, let's, oops, what did I just do? What did I just do? There we go. So let's uh, hit enter here. And so here what we're doing is we're specifying a reader to read in our file. So we're using our uh, EPT reader, Entwine Point Cloud. And here's the file name we're reading. And here's the bounds we are reading. And this is the output file name that is going to generate. So with this actually, our pipeline, and I'll break this down so you can see it. Um, that's our whole pipeline. We have two things. We have a reader and this is just a writer. I'm going to get rid of this for now. We're gonna specify a different writer at the end of this. Um, what I want to do is I want to add a filter here. So a filter, we do filters.range, and a filter is just going to limit the point cloud to, um, to specific points. And so what I'm going to do here, um, sorry, I did this wrong. This is the type. So we're going to specify a type, and it's going to be uh, filters.range. It's going to be a range filter. And now I'm gonna specify the limits of this filter. And it's gonna be for a classification, which is the point value. We want classifications from one to 17. And if you watched the previous video, you see that I went through exactly what that does. And you can go look up the LiDAR classification um, designations to know which points these specify. Now I wanna add another filter. So we'll call type. And here I'm gonna do filters. And this is gonna be a colorization filter. And we can pull up the PDAL documentation to look at this. And we'll do that here in just a second. And then I'm gonna specify a raster to colorize with. So let's do a couple things. Let's first go check out um, PDAL RGB. 
and we can go to this colorizing points with imagery we can go to these peed out filters down here actually I'm going to go to, to these filters and we can, I'm just going to search for colorization um, so we can do color interp which will assign RGB values based on a dimension and a ramp so you can just assign RGB based on like the um, like elevation or intensity and here we can the colorization if we click on this we can um, we can apply from a raster band um, here and this gives us an example of how we do it so you have your dimensions we give a raster um, we're not going to worry about the dimensions we're just going to specify a raster so let's go back over to Visual Studio Code and we'll go through this. We're going to specify the raster and the raster I have, let me go to QGIS to show you actually. If I pull this in, I've already downloaded a raster here for this area. So you can see there we have that NAPE image. It is from um, 2016. So let's just clear that out of there. And let's go back to Visual Studio Code. I'm just going to specify the location of this raster, which is in, on my C drive, and it's in temp. And I'm going to copy the file name because it's a long one, so let me just grab that from over here real quick and paste that in. So that's the file name for that raster. Um, and now I'm going to do one more thing. Oh, we need to put a comma here. I'm going to do one more thing, and this will just eliminate anything that has no data uh, with the colors. So we'll do type, forget the quotes, and here we go, fill, ah, I keep reading quotes, filters.range, so we'll use another range filter, and we'll specify limits. And so what I can do with this point cloud is now it's going to have a red um, dimension and we'll specify anything that has a value of one or more. Um, so that'll get rid of, rid of anything that has no data. And now, um, there's two ways to specify a rider here. So I could just do, um, I could name this like output, we need a comma here, whatever we do. So we could do output color RGB um, dot LAZ, and that will write an output, um, which is, I'm just gonna do it this way. I'll show you the way we, other way we could do it real quick though, and that is to come down here and specify a type, and writers dot LAS, um, and let's just hit enter here. And hit enter here, put a comma here, and then we'll give it a file name. And put our file name here, dot LAZ or LAS or whatever. And this what this gives us, it just gives us some more options. So we could come in here and go compression um, and set that to true. And we could set major and minor versions, um, whatever. But we can also just put the file name here. And I actually should probably just specify the full path just to be sure. C temp output color. So we'll do it just like this. Okay. So now um, we want to make sure that this is saved. Okay. So hopefully we're saved here. We should be. Uh, and I'm going to close this. And now we need to bring up our Anaconda prompt where we have pdown install, so you can see here that I have my pdown environment running. Um, and now all I need to do is run, uh, I'm going to run an ls here, or a dir, and make sure that we just have process.json, it's the one from today, so we're good to go. So now I'm going to do cls, so you can see a little better, and we're just going to go pdown pipeline process.json, and we're going to run this, and it's going to create that LAZ file for us. And once that's created, 
we will load it up in QGIS so you can see that it is indeed uh, a true color. It has a true color, the RGB values to, to display true color with it, and then we'll be done. Okay, the pipeline is done running. Let's go over to QGIS and load in our LAZ. You can see we have output color LAZ right here in our browser, which is a good sign. Let's go add that in. And it's gonna take just a minute for this to process and to load. And so um, once again, I'm gonna pause the video while that happens, and then we'll come back and take a look once it's ready. All right, so here is our LiDAR point cloud in 2D view and QGIS. You can see that we now have true color interpretation here. If we come over, we can also attribute this by ramp. We can do it by intensity. Um, we also have the RGB because we have the RGB values. Found those automatically. Awesome. Now let's just verify that it is um, 3D data by going to a new 3D map view. And oh, hopefully this doesn't kill my computer. It might kill it. There we go. Oh, oh, I'm gonna pause it while this while this finishes loading. And I killed QGIS, so I'm gonna close it and open it back up here. Okay, I got QGIS open back up, and I opened up a new 3D map view, and now you can see that we can rotate this. Um, I'm just gonna change the field of view here real quick to about 15 degrees. And there you go, you can see that we now have a true color 3D point cloud that we can manipulate in QGIS 3D view. Pretty neat. Um, and like I said, the cool thing about this is that processing happens on your local computer. I'll go back to that script here in just a minute, that JSON file. So there you go, there's a 3D. If I go back to the JSON, all this happens on your computer, but the data, the raw data never comes to your computer. So you're reading in this data from this online file into memory on your computer, and then you're running all the processing and saving your output file. So you don't have to host the raw data, but you can process it on your computer, which um, it's not the same as cloud processing, which is maybe more powerful, but you don't have to have the overhead of setting up the cloud processing systems and having storage and having accounts. You can just do it locally from data stored on the cloud. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, check out more. You can go to my website, geospatialschool.com to subscribe there to be notified of when all this cool stuff comes out. Thanks for watching.